Hello guys and welcome back to the Simply Code programming channel. This is Vikesh and let's get started with today's topic which is about Spring Boot and how we can build a simple application using Spring Boot. Before we go further let's understand why we need Spring Boot and the basic idea of Spring Boot is to build RESTful web services. If you want to know more about what are RESTful services please you can read about the RESTful concept as a concept what does REST stand for but the basic idea is that if you are accessing anything over HTTP then that particular component can be built as a RESTful component and Spring Boot is the most popular choice for building RESTful web services today and even in fact microservices which you might have heard about so you can build microservices which also run on HTTPs using Spring Boot. So what I'm showing you right now is the official guide of Spring which you can use to build an application with Spring Boot. It will list down all the requisites which you need in terms of the uh, JDK installations, Maven on, and how to complete this guide etc etc. You can again use the same Spring initializer which I talked about in the previous session. You can use this to generate a Spring Boot project for you specifically. So all those options are available here. So I've already done that and I'm not going to repeat what I just did in the previous session and will directly jump to an IDE where I have created a sample Spring Boot application. And the structure here, you can see the structure would look very similar with one change that in the previous example, when we were dealing with MVC, we had an SRC main resources folder and that SRC main resources folder was having all the web components or the HTMLs but since in RESTful web services you do not render the HTML but you just send back the response. The response can be the response body can be pure XML or it can be pure JSON but you do not send back an view and that's the main difference between Spring MVC and Spring Boot that in Spring MVC it will you are required to return a view technology like in the in the previous session we sent a die my lift template which is basically in HTML you can also return a JSP but with Spring Boot you do not deal with the view technology and that's the world we are living in today when you write Spring Boot you do not have to worry about how this is going to be rendered on the web page whether it is going to be rendered using HTML or what not what you need to take care of using Spring Boot is to return the right response body the exact text of the response and that's it so with that in mind the Spring Boot was born and the structure uh, apart from that the structure would look very similar there's a pom.xml here which will provide all the list of jars and dependencies which are required for this particular project so you can see all the dependencies here pretty much the similar ones we have a starter web we have a starter test and we have a spring boot maven plugin and we have an application file which is the entry point again having a public static void main method so you need to put the at the red spring boot application at the top of the class to make it an entry point if you don't do this spring boot will not run this class and spring boot will even not run your application so what we are doing as part of this example that we are just printing all the beans which are provided by spring that's all we are doing like i said it's a very lightweight and the introductory session so we will keep the logics to minimum and i'm just getting all the bean definitions sorting the bean definitions and just printing them one by one how do you get the bean definition you get that with this application context class which is returned when you run the application and how you run the application is basically using this line where you say spring application dot run and you supply application dot class with any command line arguments which you might want to use once you do this it is going to return an application context object to you and the application context object can be used to get all the bean definitions by calling this method which says get bean definition names. So that's the basic logic which is being run in the main class. Now we also have a controller but this time it's not a web controller but it's a rest controller. So you see in the previous example we just had written something like this. It was just a pure controller but here we have become more specific. We are saying that hey this is not a simple MVC controller but this is a spring boot controller or technically a rest controller. So spring provides a separate annotation for that which is at the rate rest controller. So you write that particular annotation or the on the top of the controller class which you are creating and then you provide a request mapping similar to what we did in Spring MVC but while you return it you do not return a view technology 
you just return the raw response. Here I'm just returning a string, but you can return a JSON object, you can return an XML object or whatever you want to, but not a view technology. That's what I'm doing. Like, like you can see there's literally nothing I'm doing in this. It's just a simple uh, string return statement, which I have printed here. And that's all the code I have right now here. I just have these two classes. Okay, so that was all about what I have written in the project and now it's time to run the project. So I have just reached to the location on inside my terminal where the project pom.xml was present. And if I just do an ls, you will see that there is a pom.xml available here and all the code directories are also available here. So now I will just run this application and to run this application, I'm just going to type mvn spring hyphen boot colon run and hit enter. Once I do that, the spring application is going to spring boot application is going to get started. And let's go back to uh, the controller and actually the main app main endpoint and see what we were doing there. I did a sysout here which said let's inspect the beans provided by spring boot. And then I was printing all the bean names. And if I go back to the output, I will see the same line being written here, which was around let's inspect the beans. So you can see that message which says let's inspect the beans provided by Spring Boot and then all the beans which are available in the application context are printed here. So that's that's the basic idea which I want to give you that you can actually build a Spring Boot application and you can write your REST controllers, return a string body from it and once this is run then you can also run your application for from the web browser as well. So let's try to hit that particular uh, URL which I wrote here. So the URL of hello country. So for that, let me just open a new cognito window and our application is already running. So if I just say HTTP localhost 8080 slash, I get this message here which says greetings from Spring Boot. And this is the message which we were sending from the REST controller. So this validates our understanding that we can invoke a REST controller which is a spring boot rest controller via the same method but this time we are not getting an html but we are just returning this particular string now you can use the string in any ways you want so it depends upon the consumer so that's all i want to cover uh, as part of the spring boot now spring boot is a huge huge topic and we can spend hours and hours talking about spring boot but since this is more of an introductory session so i just wanted the concept to get introduced and remember the value proposition of why you would need spring boot the basic idea is to build restful web services or build restful microservices that's the basic idea behind using spring boot in your applications and also remember the difference between web mvc spring mvc application and spring boot application spring mvc is for building web application spring boot is for building restful applications which might not have a web interface integrated with them at that moment so that's all i want to cover for this particular session and in the next session we are going to have a look at an advanced java project using some of the concepts which we might have learned during this whole journey and that would be the last session of this particular tutorial series if you like this video a thumbs up would be massively appreciated and please don't forget to subscribe to simply code for more programming related videos thank you and we'll see you again in the next session